Warning, we got a brand new puppy. He's cute as fuck, but he's in here. If you hear weird noise during this episode, you you understand. My apologies. Let's get on with the episode. What's going on, guys, and welcome to January's episode of Game of the Month, the show where we play a game at random every month, and at the end of the month, we talk about it. My name's Seth, and joining me today is Sarah, to my left, your right, and up in the box, we got Chevy. Uh, Hopefully, you guys are doing well, and uh, hopefully, you guys are excited to talk about Icarus First Cohort, which is the game I picked in January to play. Uh, In case you're new here, uh, every three months, one of the Tasty crew gets to pick a game, and January was my month because it's my birthday month. Happy birthday to me. Icarus was my present. We played it, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, before we do that, though, we have to pick a brand new game of the month for February. Uh, how this works is we have a list of backburner games, games that we've picked and put on this list, and I will pull up a random number generator, which I happen to have right here, and we will find out randomly what number uh, we get. And uh, it will coincide with the game, and that will be our game of the month for February. As you can see, we have 21 games on the list as of right now. And, uh, yeah, we will find out. Um, But, yeah, uh, you guys doing all right? How you doing? Feeling good? You guys excited? Yep. Hell yeah. I'm sure you look so excited. You got the list ready, though? I'll say. Oh, yeah. Can't see you, so. Yeah, spooky. Yeah, I got the list. We're fucking we're like ghosts in your room dude um all right well let's find out what we'll be playing in february like i said we have 21 games on that list i'm gonna uh close my eyes i'm gonna hit this generate button it takes a second on this random.org website but i'm gonna hit it a couple times just to make it extra random and uh yeah let's find out in three two one i'm clicking and uh i'm gonna click until i count down from three three two one one and 15. Uh, Elite Dangerous. Interesting. All right, so we will be Mm. playing Elite Dangerous in February alongside all the fucking games coming out in February and uh, games on Plus Club, which are UFC 4, Planet Coaster, Console Edition, and Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep. Uh, What do you guys think about uh, playing Elite Dangerous in February? Um, Isn't that the... Didn't they just come up with a come up with an update where you get to like be the person or whatever? Odyssey, I think it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be cool. Yeah. Let's see what yeah. that's about. Let's see what that's about. What's that Odyssey <laughs> about over there? What is that? Chevy thoughts? Um, I mean, I've owned the game for a long time. Um, I just haven't committed to playing it, so it's a at the very least a good reason to play the game. Yeah, and it has multiplayer, so we'll have to check that out. And I'm going to have to do the tutorial again, because last time I played it, the controls take some getting used to. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I am actually excited to find out how the um, on-ground first-person missions work. Um, I've heard good and bad from different people, so uh, we'll get to make our own decisions and discuss that at the end of February. So, uh, yeah, we'll be playing that, and uh, we'll talk about it on the next game of the month. Um, Very cool. Let me put that in. Elite Dangerous. All right. Um, Okay, so uh, in January, we played Icarus First Cohort. I'll be referring to it as Icarus from now on. Um, If you didn't get a chance to play Icarus, it is a first and third person survival game that is sci-fi based. In it, you uh, pick missions and you start from uh, nothing at all and you have to build up uh, equipment um, similar to any survival game. building houses, building uh, forges, uh, smelting things, making armor, uh, you know, medicinal stuff, weapons, all that stuff you expect from a survival game. The big thing that's different in Icarus compared to other survival survival games is there is a end point to your mission in which you have to either uh, complete the objective or 
leave the planet uh, before the time is out, because if you run out of time on your mission, you lose your characters permanently. They are gone forever. Um, but you can leave a mission at any time, and if you complete your mission, you get uh, rewarded for it. And yeah, we all played it. And let's start with Sarah about your impressions on Icarus in January. Um, <clears throat> I really liked playing Icarus. Um, I think that like it's a cool sort of, I don't want to say like twist because it's like still just a survival game, but mm. like it adds a little bit of an extra layer of like kind of something to keep it interesting, I guess, with the um, like missions that you go on um, with like the different objectives. It's not just like, I feel like a lot of survival games, you kind of get to the point where like everything's just a little bit too easy. Like surviving isn't like a challenge anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so this kind of keeps keeps it a little bit more fresh. Like you can't just kind of get into this like groove of how you do things and then it's just kind of easy because it's just kind of mixing it up all the time. Um, so that's kind of like for me the most sort of interesting thing about the game that they've done is like just kind of trying to to do something to make it fresh. Mm -hmm. um, I think in general, I really like the skill tree. Um, I like that there's kind of like, there's like a, so there's like a skill tree, like a talent tree, like you would see in like an MMO or something. Um, and then there's also like the- Tech tree. Tech tree, right? Where you're actually like picking the types of like recipes and stuff that you're learning. Um, so it's like, kind of a double layer of like customizing your character not only can you get like passives that like make you consume less oxygen or um like uh you know uh, what's when i have like the crop plots mm -hmm. um grow like 20 percent faster or like you can get ones where in the tree i'm i'm doing where like uh your crops don't decay in your bag or any crops that you grow don't decay. So there's a lot of like interesting stuff that kind of would set your character apart from like somebody else's character, mm -hmm. um, which I really like. Like Worth mentioning as well that when it comes to perks, you only get 40 points and there's much more perks in the game than 40. So you are uh, dedicating yourself to yeah. a specific build, whether it's good or not. Respec is not in the game yet. They do plan on implementing that. But with the tech tree, you can pretty much buy everything. So you are making a build mm -hmm. that is yours. Um, but then with tech tree, you're eventually going to have most of what everybody else has. Mm -hmm. So just throw it out there. I forgot to mention that in the beginning. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, so it's kind of cool because like, like, if I were to pick up that like nothing in my bag decayed and nobody else had that, it would kind of uh, introduces this element of like, well, let's work together. Like I'll carry all of the stuff that could decay. Like when you need for them, no kind of deal. Like if you really wanted to go crazy with like the multiplayer kind of um, strategy type stuff. Um, but yeah, so there's a ton of stuff um, like that. Um, you know, uh, one of the, the issues I would say that I had with it is that it does feel a little bit janky still in a lot of ways, <laughs> um, especially like it becomes really apparent with the like enemy pathing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and some of the animations just feel a little bit off, like not quite as smooth as they could be. Mm -hmm. A little bit of lag here and there. Um, but overall, like, I think it's really fun. Um, there's a lot of uh, interesting ideas as far as crafting, a bunch of different crafting tables. Like, you could, I mean, there's stuff, like, we didn't even get to. You know, we barely touched iron and things like that. So um, there's a lot to this game that I feel like we, we didn't, even, didn't even get there, even with barely scratched all the, the amount of, of playtime we put in. Um yeah. Yeah. Um, Chevy. Yeah, I mean, ugh, I actually quite agree with a lot of that. Um, my uh, my main impression of the game is um, 
it takes everything that I think is mostly good about survival games and, and still uses it um, and just implements a different style of gameplay um, with the, you know, the temporary missions and stuff. Yeah, uh, structure. Now on a personal, yeah. Now on a personal level, I'm not a huge fan of that, um, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I actually appreciate that they're doing something completely different to set them apart from the other ones in that regard because, um, you know, I... I watched random Minecrafts of all time as an example, and there are people who just re-roll their worlds constantly to start over. So mm-hmm. that type of player is out there, and that game's um, embracing that style, and I think that's a good thing. Um, I'm definitely more of a I want to keep a place type of deal, but uh, I think the other thing it does, which um, I do like, which kind of reminds me of things like Conan and, and Ark, which is... Um, there's a huge emphasis on developing your character. Like the character is a huge part of the journey outside of just the survival part. Um, so it gives you that long-term goal. So even, even if you're not keeping a base in this game, um, you are building something still that is uh, um, a more permanent thing. Um, so it becomes almost more akin to a, a role-playing game Um in that regard. So, uh, yeah, you can kind of build things similar to like classes in this. Yeah. You can start specking more uh-huh. into health and defense and combat stuff or more stealth stuff, more things that will help you build better, chop down trees faster. Um, yeah, it does feel yeah, kind of so like an RPG. I, yeah. And if I, and I think for, for me going into this game, like if, if I were to play it in the future, um, I think my mindset would have to be more in that regard and less that I'm playing um, necessarily a survival game because my brain is going to just kind of default because it's been wired to at this point into a more like permanent structure style game um, versus the more temporary style of this one. So, um, And it is, it is again, worth mentioning for anybody who didn't play this game, there is an outpost mode that you can play that does not have uh, threats in it um, where it's essentially made just to... Uh, build if you want to. That is not what the game's designed around, but they do offer a mode for you to just build your heart's content. I do believe you still have to collect the resources to do it, but um, that's what that mode's for, to have a more permanent um, place. But the core game is based around these temporary missions that can last six hours in real time or 14 days in real time. Anyway. Yeah, I, I, and I, it's funny because I like the, um the threats and stuff like that are fine i don't mind that aspect of it um you know even when i play minecraft or Ark or conan i like having those monsters there and stuff like that because you know um otherwise you know you're just playing creative mode at that point um Mm -hmm. which is fine as well but it's less of a achievement i guess when you when you build a massive structure but you had to fight the the elements to do it it feels good so um anyways um overall i think the game plays fine it and like sarah said it does have kind of that survival game jank that i think they pretty much all have at this point <laughs> um and uh yeah i mean it's a fun it's a fun time i don't think it's my top choice but i uh i enjoyed my time for survival games you mean yes yes gotcha. yes yeah, that uh, as a, d- a dude who's played most of the survival games, they all have that jank to a certain degree. That's why I'm fingers crossing Blizzard survival game, and let's see how that thing launches. It'd be amazing to see a survival game come out and not have a lot of jank. I actually think the least janky survival game, and it has plenty of it, is probably Conan. That one feels pretty... uh. Pretty polished compared to a lot of the survival games I've played. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and even it has weird stuff. But I mean, you can like crawl up walls, all sorts of shit. That looks a little weird, but it's awesome. They can do it. <laughs> um, as for my impressions of Icarus, um, I've talked about it. Every, every time I talk about this game, I always bring it up. I always bring up Dean Hall because if you follow the channel regularly, you've heard this. But anybody who possibly could be new, uh, I'm a big fan of DayZ, the original mod. I used to play it a lot. 
and uh, he's the one who created that. He made the standalone Daisy that was not that great, and then he left, made Rocket Works, and this is the first game they've made. Um, so he leaves a legacy behind him that somebody like me is going to either view positive or negatively, because a lot of people looked at the standalone of Daisy and fucking hate him for it. Um, but I see the potential of uh, the the genre that he uh, really took off with um so with him returning to survival uh my first question is like okay there's a lot of survival games out there there's a lot of them nowadays um there's a time where they're like rare now they're everywhere and they all pretty much do the same stuff with a little bit of difference some lean more into combat and action and rpg elements some lean more into like nutrients you got to really eat like the right uh things you need protein fiber all that kind of shit which are typically the sort of games I'm not as into, but I know a lot of people who really like like games like Green Hell and stuff like that. Um, so I'm thinking like, what what's Icarus going to bring to the table? And the big thing that Icarus is bringing to the table, because um, it pretty much does what Ark does. Uh, you are surviving, you're building, you're getting better and better technologies to better survive and take on newer challenges. And as we've already covered, uh, Icarus is about taking on temporary missions. So every mission you take on, you're building, but it's bittersweet because you're going to leave this place, which always kind of feels, especially if you've been there for multiple real days, um, it feels kind of weird to abandon everything that you've built. But the thing that this does really well is you are always starting from the beginning again. You get to experience that coming up in a survival game uh, experience that you very quickly leave in most survival games. You get to a point in a lot of survival games where you're just you're thriving. You got everything mastered. You're good. And even though there is constant progression in this that does make starting easier every single time, you still have to start from ground zero. And uh, that is a big thing this game's bring to the table. It's also interesting to be bringing um, kind of meeting people in the middle on hardcore gameplay. So you play a lot of survival games, but like Daisy and other ones out there, if you die, your character's fucking dead. You can go recover your stuff, but they're dead. This is interesting because you don't permanently lose your character if you die, although it is pretty shitty. You can still go recover your body, but you get a XP deficit that you have to refill. Um, otherwise, you just lose XP every time you die. But you can respawn or you can get brought back by other people. But if you are unable to complete your mission in time, you lose your character permanently. They're gone. I don't know if that's going to stick around or not, but that's how it works now. And so they are bringing a hardcore element to this game. And those are the two big things I think are really different about this game other than uh, a couple small things, I guess, from other solo games. Uh, except for also the weather system is is pretty cool too. Now, games like Conan Exiles has done some pretty cool things with weather too. I think the sandstorm storm system in that game is really cool, especially when you first experience it. It's really stressful. You can actually see it on the horizon coming and there's a sense of like, we got to fucking prepare for this. Later you get suits, you can walk through it, whatever. Uh, in Icarus, there is actually a weather system that, um, you know, it's nice out, day, night, whatever. And then the game will actually make a sound effect and alert you to a weather system that's coming, whether it's just showers, uh, torrential rain, storms, lightning, uh, wind storms. And it will actually have a thing in the top right corner where it shows a timeline moving uh, in real time of uh, how severe the weather is going to get and when to prepare for that. And uh, it's really cool. The They did a really good job with the weather. You can actually see the, the trees swaying in the wind. You can hear them cracking and breaking and falling. Uh, you know, lightning strikes things and they light on fire. Um, and these weather systems are really good random challenges that will happen during your mission. It's something that's dynamic that makes things um, feel tense, which is... Uh, uh, really appreciate it. So those are like the three main factors that are that are different. Outside of that, it is a very traditional survival game. Um, you need to eat. It's very basic. You just need to eat. Um, there are foods that have buffs. There are foods that are uh, better at satiating you, but that's about it. There's no different types of nutrients you have to worry about. Um, there's combat in the game. It's pretty straightforward. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It does have a cool system when you're using a bow, though, that if you get a stealth not stealth. If you just get a headshot and insta kill an animal, it'll actually do the sniper elite thing in real time <laughs> where it shows the, the animal that you shot in the head up close and you get that shot. 
um, of, of it happening. That's actually satisfying, even though it's kind of janky. Um, <laughs> but it's it's always everybody as you're playing, they'll be like, oh, I got a headshot. Like it, even like hours into it, people are still saying that. Yeah. So uh, it's it's always fun. Um, yeah. So it, it's got pretty much all that stuff that you expect. You can you you can plant uh, food. You can build houses out of different materials from thatch to wood to later stone and metals. Um, we never got to that point. We pretty much got to wood, and that's where we're at. We're about at stone. I have the capability of doing it now. Um, and then eventually there's guns in the game. Right now we're still using spears and bows and arrows, stuff like that. Um, so pretty common fare. Um, it does have an expansive uh, skill tree, uh, which is really nice. Um, you can really... Uh, make a build in this game, which I really appreciate. It's actually one of my favorite things about the game is every time I level, I'm like, oh shit, my guy's going to get just a little bit better and a little bit better. Actually, some of the perks are pretty substantial. Um, I was playing, I have two characters. One's 28, one's 22. And my level 22 does not have the run speed and stamina of my level 28. And so when I'm running with that dude, I'm running out of stamina faster and I don't move nearly as fast as that guy. And I really miss it. But with my level 22 guy, I can take a spear and I can throw it into a bear's head and kill him instantly. It's just boom over. And uh, I can't do that with my level 28. So, yeah, um, I, I think the um, just to touch on that, like I think the it doesn't feel really dramatic, like when you're leveling mm -hmm. and, and picking them. But, you know, I have I think my character's level 25 and I have a level one that I hopped on to try the outpost thing mm -hmm. and and as soon as i did that the character feels completely different um so it's it seems really subtle like when you're playing but it's actually like adding up and makes a huge difference if you compare it to something else yeah yeah because cool. a lot of a lot of times like if you're starting into a part of a tree and it's the first of three parts it'll be like five percent ten percent twenty percent and so the first one you get, you don't really notice a whole lot of difference. The next one, not really a whole lot of difference. But then like on the last one, you normally get a pretty big chunk. And then it's been kind of gradual. But with another character, when you don't have that, you notice it. So it has a really good perk system, I think. It is gratifying. It doesn't feel like it's wasted. But it does feel you don't really notice it as you're doing it. Well, it, I kind of like it because you don't feel... I feel like sometimes they go too far and like your character is suddenly like this unstoppable like superhero force um, and they do it in kind of a subtle way so that it feels like realistic. Yeah. Well, in this game, definitely still trying to be a like hardcore survival game. So it does seem that you are just everyone's kind of built to do the same things. I, c I can sneak around without putting any points into it. I can swing a spear and throw it. I can shoot arrows. But as you spec into things, you become just a little better than other people, enough to notice. For instance, um, I've put points into like carpentry type stuff, so um, I'm able to make uh, boxes that everybody else can go into their tech tree and buy. They can make the small box or the big box. But my character now, when he makes the big boxes on the first part of the tree, it adds three extra inventory spots. It's not a lot. Then the second part of that adds five inventory spots. Now that's five whole spots. You can put like a hundred of something and a hundred of something there and a hundred of something there yeah, that, yeah. that only I can create. So any box I make, someone can pick it up, put it wherever they want, but it still has that extra five. And so it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is because other people do not have those five slots. Um, and it, it, it just, you start to feel more specialized in how you build your character. Um, even with the tech tree, eventually everybody getting most of the stuff on it, um, your specialties in your perks can give you an edge on that tech that other people don't have. Like if you start specking into uh, using bow and arrows, everybody can get the same bow and arrow with the same arrows and shoot them. But somebody who can draw draw back on a faster, um, maintain stealth better, is going to have a better edge on that. So it's got a really good system in that in that regard. Um, yeah. It's a lot of variability, mm -hmm. which is cool. Kind of lets you play with stuff. Even if eventually you get the same things, like, you know, I focused on something in the beginning different than what you focused on. And, and like early on, you know, I couldn't even make a spear. Mm -hmm. 
um, or like a repair hammer, you know, you were making all that stuff for me while I was, you know, making a skinning table and making medicine, medicine, crushing, stuff. crushing flowers on my herbalism making bread. table, making bread, dude. Yeah. That was exciting. <laughs> Made bread, even though it takes, takes your water away. Yeah. So yeah, the perk system and the tech tree are really cool. I really like them. Um, I think the world of Icarus is actually, uh, it's funny because the game isn't the best looking game ever, but it also, I kind of like the way it looks. <laughs> I think it, like sometimes I'll see like uh, in the distance on the mountainside, the cliff side of the mountains in the distance, the sun just beaming across the, one of the faces of the mountain. And I'm just like, this is a nice looking game. This is nice looking. I like this. Um, but it's not like the most technically yeah. best looking game either. Yeah, I think it has nice looking environments. Yeah. Um, the weather also is really cool to, like I said earlier, watch trees swing in the wind, watch branches or hear branches cracking. Um, the building system I think is good. It's not the best I've seen in a survival game, but it's not the worst either. I would say it's better than mid tier. Um, you can really get inventive with what you build. Um, there are some really interesting limitations, uh, something we never experienced, but I heard on uh, a YouTube video saying that if you have too many people standing on one floorboard and there's not enough support, the floorboard will actually break and collapse. So weight does matter. Uh, that's why you need the support beams. Um, and also when wind storms happen or storms in general, uh, if lightning strikes your house and it's flammable, it will light on fire and it's horrifying. Uh, <laughs> True. Um, and also when wind's happening, uh, your ceiling, especially if you have a thatch roof, you'll watch like the pieces of thatch just flying out of the ceiling onto the floor. Um, it has a really it. cool visceral, the house is ripping apart in a fucking hurricane uh, sensation that I've never seen in a game. Um, yeah. it's, it, it, the first time we experienced it was fucking alarming. We, were, we had repair hammers. And we're just trying to repair the house as it's ripping apart. I'm like, this is fucking scary. Because the game has a system called exposure when you're out in the elements for too long. And certain storms in different degrees will increase your exposure faster. You start taking damage. So you don't want to be out in a storm for too long. Um, yeah, so it has a really cool weather system. has a really cool building system. Um, has cool upgrades. Um has an interesting uh, cave system in the game where they're dark and there's things in there that uh, will attack you, these cave worms. Um, and so there's a lot of like um, expeditions happening into these caves where you're setting up light systems and stuff. Or if you're cheesing out, you just turn the shadows off. Um, well, and that's interesting too because that's at least so far the only place um, where we found like iron and mm -hmm. copper. So it's kind of this barrier um it's like to a skill check progression almost. exactly yeah. like you have to kind of do something to give yourself the advantage mm -hmm. um in the darkness to be able to get to the next like level of technology yeah yeah there's one other thing. Oh, uh, one thing that I have not mentioned at all for anybody who hasn't played this. The game, because you are on an alien planet, uh, you have to keep your oxygen levels up. And so there's uh, something called oxite that is either uh, on the ground or in deposits. And you have to get that. And you can eat that uh, in your suit and it'll give you oxygen, but you have to use a lot of it. So you have to build things called oxidizers and you load oxide into the oxidizer and essentially fills up a balloon that can blow up with fire near them. So be careful with that. They they're following the, the actual rules of oxygen. Um, and you can take hits off of that and get oxygen back for less oxide. And then there's also um, a thing that essentially you can have like um, little oxygen flasks that you can hook up to this machine and fill them so you can have oxygen on the go. Um, so that's a really cool system. The game also has a lot of different biomes. It has a snow biome, a uh, desert biome that we're just starting to get to. Um, in which you need armor and uh, resources to survive in those elements. Uh, cold elements will kill you. Hot elements will kill you. Uh, the beginning of the game is more like, um, you know, it looks like temperate Pacific Northwest almost. Like it's yeah, it's very forest. forested. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's got all that going for it. Uh, criticisms I have of the game is I think the game is not well optimized. That's something they can fix definitely. And if you turn down the shadows, you do see a performance increase. 
So a lot of it is the shadows in the game. I would, unless you have to play like this, tell you not to turn the shadows all the way down though, because it does give you a really cheesy advantage to the game, but play the game how you want. You bought it, fucking play it the way you want. Um, so optimization is not great. They can work on that and they have been working on that. They've actually been very active on working on this game. Uh, also, uh, animals are life in the game in general is kind of janky. It could be better. If they never fix it, I won't complain because survival games are kind of like that sometimes. But like wolves, deer, bears, their pathing's kind of weird. They get stuck on weird things. They get stuck in rocks sometimes. Like they um, die in water. <laughs> yeah. They move insanely fast in weird like angular directions <laughs> where they'll run diagonal and then they'll turn on a right angle and take off another direction and it just looks really robotic. Um, so that's something that could definitely use some work. Um but the skinning system, the hunting system's all great. I really enjoy it. So just their their behaviors and animations and uh, pathing needs improvement. Really, that's that's all I'm really uh, asking for in that regard. Maybe more variety on wildlife, but there is quite a bit, and we haven't even seen the wildlife in other biomes. So yeah, um, yeah, I would just like to see more. Uh, all the resources, resource gathering, I think is great. Uh, trees have a weird glitch where if you uh, fell them and they're just laying around and you walk over them, sometimes you can take damage. It's a physics problem in the game, so hopefully they'll fix that as well. Um, I think that's about it. There's a really kind of shitty, I'm giving you guys pro tip here. I'm sure you know if you play the game. Um, you're able to uh, use a pickaxe on rocks to get resources, but you could dig into them and make like a fucking igloo. And if you're caught in the middle of a storm, if you dig into a rock, you don't take exposure, which I guess is realistic. It's the same as getting into a cave or something like that. But it seems like an exploit that makes threat of expeditions not that bad anymore. And so... um I don't know if they need to fix that or not, but it, it does. It feels like it cheapens um, the survival elements of uh, the travel in the game, running into random storms and stuff. Because for a while there, before I even knew that, I would like build quick shelters and stuff when we're out running around. And now I'm just like, I'll just get in the rock and just climb the rock and just wait out the storm. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, last thing, and then I'll we can we can move this along. Um, there is. With, with the slight roguelike uh, nature of this game, there is a permanent progression outside of your character's progression. And that is uh, you get um, a currency after you finish missions. You get like 150 or 75 or 200 or whatever. And then there is a um, 3D printer uh, that you're able to... Um, pay for research on items and then after that for like a third of the price print those items after you've researched them and you can take those on to missions and at first it starts with temporary items that break so it gives you like an edge as soon as you start the mission you have an axe ready to go you don't have to go craft one but it'll break eventually and you can't fix it because it's 3d printed but eventually if you keep researching into those trees uh you get ones that are reusable um which is pretty cool. So eventually you will be better and better and better prepared for the missions you embark on. Um, there's also uh, these items that if you have them in your inventory, they give you stats. So for instance, there's one that gives you 5% movement speed, I think. I think it's 5%. You have to like equip it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but you can have more than one and they stack. Because I put, I think, like five or six on my character and mm. I was fucking cruising. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, that's a thing. So there's there's a lot to this game. It's a survival game. It does a lot of the same things survival games do, um, but it does some things it has different. Has a long term grind. Yeah. 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 And there's a lot of things to do and a lot of things to unlock. You can spend fucking hours in this game easily, as I've done, as everyone here's done. I mean, even Chevy played it like once, and he put like eight hours into it in that one sit. So, um, you know, you can you can really play this game. Um, but yeah, doesn't reinvent the wheel, but it does make it interesting again. Mm -hmm. And I do really dig that. And I really digged playing this. That's why I picked it this month. Um, and yeah, I, I had a blast playing it. Uh, it needs some work. It's a diamond in the rough, I think. I think it's a really good game, but needs work. Is a little janky. But a much better first effort than the Daisy standalone. So Dean is coming a long way. <laughs> and yeah, I had a lot of fun. I will definitely play more. Um... 
All right. Well, I had a lot to say on that. Uh, anything else? You guys want to add anything? Uh, no, I think I, I guess just to say that, like, well, you did have a lot to say, kind of talking about all the different layers and stuff. Um, what's nice about it is that there are a lot of, like, layers, like, different things that you're doing, but it doesn't really feel that complicated like when you're no, in the, it you know it's, it's one of the easiest like to jump so, into survival games i've ever played yeah everything's so smooth it just makes sense like you're just doing these things and there's a lot of complexity there but really accessible yeah some survival games you hop into and you're like looking online to figure shit out yeah and this <laughs> yeah. game like it just makes sense everything just does what you everything think it's gonna do yeah and if you like this building piece can also turn into these building pieces it says it in the bottom right corner of your screen. It just mm -hmm. gives you modern day fucking uh, tutorial stuff. Yeah, you don't have to look it up on the wiki. Yeah, exactly, which is fucking great. <laughs> it's 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 communicated really well. Yeah. Um, which kind of makes sense given that people working on this have worked on survival games in the past, so they're definitely, you know, learning from that experience. So yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, anything else? I don't think so. Let's jump into recommendations. I'll start. I would recommend this to anybody who likes survival games. If you are into survival games in any capacity, I would say check this out. Um, the caveat of uh, the temporary missions, just try it out and see if you're into it. It is changing things up a bit. Outside of that, though, it is a good survival game. Uh, as someone who likes survival games, I'm recommending, the, recommending this to you as I hit my mic. Um, and yeah, uh, people who like cooperative games, this game is an eight player cooperative game. Um, you can have eight people on a mission and it feels gratifying to have all these people work on different uh, projects uh, towards the same goal. Like in survival games, it's like, hey, let's make sure we don't die easily. And once that happens, everybody's just doing their own projects. I'm gonna build a castle. I'm gonna build a tunnel for 18 miles, um, all that kind of shit. In this game, you have a mission you're on you got to go eliminate the wolf you got to go find these samples you got to do all this stuff and you have a time limit to do it so everybody's working together it is a good cooperative game um we recently just talked about deep rock galactic and even though it's not like deep rock galactic it kind of is because it feels like you're dropping in doing a mission and leaving um so that's probably one reason i like it a lot <laughs> uh so yeah it's a really good uh cooperative game that you need to work to together um, to achieve your goals. Um, I would recommend it to people who really like games where you develop your own builds and you can really deep dive into it and get really creative on how you make your character. Um, anybody who likes a long grind game, something you really work towards, this has uh, a lot of things to unlock. I've put, I think like 60 some hours into it now and uh, I'm scratching the surface. Like I said, I got a level 28. Um, and I got a level 22. And so I got two characters and uh, I've, I'm still using about the same tech. So there's a lot of stuff to work towards. And given that you can uh, 3D print uh, items, um, I've barely touched that. I barely touched it. So uh, there's a lot to work towards. Um, I feel like Deep Rock Galactic. Maybe check this out. <laughs> um, just throwing it out there. Uh, you guys have anything to add? I mean, it's a it's a, a fucking hardcore survival game. Not the most hardcore, but it yeah. is. So it, I can't recommend it to everybody. If uh, if you like the idea of uh, what word am I looking for? Uh, the potential for like Zen loss, essentially, like losing mm -hmm. your character or losing you know uh, what you have in that regard. Um, I'd recommend that as well. Some I know some people are into that kind of stuff. So me, um, se semi hardcore. Yeah. So yeah, if you if you uh, if you're into games like Tarkov and fucking Hunt, this is not that gameplay, but it does have a sense of risk mm -hmm. that I fucking love. I play better in games where I'm like <laughs> I don't want to lose my shit. So in fact, you and me were on a mission that we had 14 real days to complete. <laughs> we got a new puppy, so like five of those days were taking care of him and yeah. we kind of lost track of the time on that mission came back and we just decided to leave the mission and not complete the objective because we didn't want to lose our characters yeah. like i was like thinking about it i was like fuck we're gonna lose our characters. we get the hell off that planet it's stressful yeah so it has that element of of like hardcore without being too hardcore 
Yeah, I think uh, if you have friends to play it with, um, where you know you guys are working together uh, to create builds, I think the RPG elements really shine in that scenario. And like group synergy. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think, uh, yeah, I would recommend people like that. This falls into the survival thing, but also maybe you do this in The Sims. But if you like building stuff, uh, it's a survival game. You can build stuff, so I'd recommend it to you. But also if you like hunting, uh, if you like sneaking around, this does have a basic stealth system, but you can't sneak up on animals. You can make ghillie suits and uh, really Love the ghillie really suit. put effort into being a hunter. Uh, there is a skinning bench that really benefits you if you are trying to get a lot of uh, animal parts, you get much more from the skinning bunch. You actually can pick up animals and walk them to it and put them there as opposed to cutting them up with a knife. So even if you play like Red Dead online and you really enjoy hunting and skinning animals, this game has that as well. So I'd recommend it to you. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that's about as far as I can think of when it comes to recommendations. You guys got anything else to add? It is, it is a hardcore survival game. There is risk. And uh, it is difficult sometimes and frustrating. And sometimes bosses can bug and do weird shit and it'll piss you off and make your fucking hair fall out. But. It kind of like locks you into the mission thing too. I don't know if they're planning on changing it, but like the, I mean, and maybe I'm missing something, but even the outposts, like there aren't any threats, which means there aren't any wolves, which means you're not getting any fur. Mm-hmm. And so, like, when I was playing the outpost, it was really difficult, you know, because you think you're in this, like, mode where you just get to build stuff and it's going to be fun, but it's really hard to get that resource that kind of gets you to the next level. Yeah, I think they're mostly just wanting you to, so, like, build houses. But you, but there's just, like, so much you can't do without mm. fur. You can't even make a bedroll. Yeah, they'll have to address that. So. Actually, pretty reminiscent of early – uh, sorry, it's a weird comparison, but early Minecraft um, – uh, survival peaceful mode because now monsters spawn you couldn't yeah. get things originally like gunpowder and bone and stuff like that so they had to over time implement alternative ways to get that kind of stuff be nice if you could just turn turn them on just like yeah I, th- setting. I think the big thing is they're avoiding people going in there and grinding for xp but also you get i think 75 percent less xp in that mode than in uh, the normal mode, so they've already addressed it. But I do, I could turn see, XP off. Yeah, 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 that's what I would do. I think I would just turn off completely. That's a, that's that's the idea they should definitely take. Because if you're just building, I don't think you should be worried about the XP. If you want the XP, go play the missions. But um, I could see the potential of somebody like building something up that they they don't have a time limit to worry about. And just, you know, farming, just farming fucking animals over and over again to make up for that. Um, so I get their concern. Yeah. But yeah, if you just turn XP off, it's just like a build mode. And you can show off like, oh, I built this house. People have built some fucking cool houses in there, too. I just like, I want to try stuff out, like see how stuff works, yeah. you know. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I think that kind and of takes the game's obviously still in development because even when you go in the like the, the skill trees and stuff like that, there's stuff that's coming soon. Yeah, and they add stuff all the time. Uh, one of the big complaints about the game is the intro movie that you can't skip, and they had to come out and let people know, and they fixed the sense. They're letting people know that that movie's actually a loading screen, <laughs> um, but they never told anybody that. So they thought it was just like an intro movie that you're watching, but you couldn't skip it. And they're like, actually, once it's done loading, you can skip it, which explains a lot for me. Cause I've hit space bar in that. And like at the end it would like skip it. And then sometimes I've played the game and like seconds into it, I was able to skip the video. So I'm like, <laughs> why is skipping this video so inconsistent? They finally said it's a loading thing. And now when you start the game in the bottom left corner, it tells you it's loading. And then it says you can skip this now. Yeah. So they just weren't transparent about that. So, but they dressed it. So, because that intro movie is really fucking weird. I feel like they've and addressed annoying. a lot of things. And they oh yeah. Not been out that long. They've been really so. active about it, which uh, makes me feel good because uh, games like this, you can go like, "Are you gonna support it? Like, what's going on? Like, or did yeah. we get ripped off?" So, last thing I'll recommend on, um, if you like games that have 
dynamic weather systems. I don't know. There's a lot out there, but uh, you know, the idea of like your house is at risk and terrain can change. And by that, I mean like trees, not really the ground. Um, definitely check it out. It's uh, it's it's pretty cool on a tech level alone. I think it's really neat. Um, so yeah. Anything else? I don't think so. Yeah, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, Chevy, great, great it. Um, it's kind of an easy one for me. I'm going to give it a B. I think it's a good um, foundation with a lot of potential for growth. Um, and even within the game itself, it shows that uh, the plans are already in there. So you can kind of see a direction they're going um, even without them having to come out and say it. And by the, the sound of it, they are actively making changes and communicating. So um, I think it's a, a good starting point. It, I think it is in version 1.0. So, mm. um, you know, it'll be uh, interesting to see in a year what the game looks like. Yeah. All right. We got a B. Sarah, what would you grade it? I actually would also give it a B. Um, just because, I mean, I, I do really love the game. Um, I have a lot of fun playing it, but I agree with a lot of what Chevy said. It feels like there's still a lot of work to be done and, you know, I'm hopeful because they're doing it, it seems, but they still got to get there. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely some work to be done, but I think a lot of it's like the, the tech and the perk trees, I think are like pretty well done. Like the, they've mm-hmm. done, there's a lot there, but yeah, yeah just a lot of, there. yeah, it's, it's pretty far along. There's just a lot of fine tuning they got to mm-hmm. do. Yeah. All right. So two B's. Um, I really, really like this game a lot, <laughs> but it does have some problems. So I have to be realistic with, my, with myself. I'm struggling in my brain. I keep almost wanting to give it an A minus, but it does have legit problems. So I'm going to go with a very strong B plus. Um, I do think eventually this game, unless they really fuck it, will be an A minus to an A for me. Um, I, like I said, I want to give an A minus right now, but uh, there's some things I got to work on for sure. Um, but as of right now, I really enjoy the game. Um, even when I'm super fucking frustrated with it, I like shit that challenges me. Um, and uh, it's a really, really cool game. Um, it's definitely at this point in my top eight maybe six survival games of all time um, and has the potential of maybe being my favorite one. Um, but yeah, it's really good. Um, and uh, if you like survival games, like I said, I would recommend it to you, but a uh, very strong B plus it's a great foundation and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Um, all right. You guys have anything else to say? we got two B's and a B plus. All right. And we will be playing elite dangerous. So very excited to play that with you guys and yeah. Uh, let us know in the comments. What do you guys think of Icarus? Have you played it? What do you think of it? Do you think it's good, bad, somewhere in the middle? Uh, what would you like to see from it in the future? If you haven't played it, are you interested in playing? Are you not interested in playing? What do you think about survival games in general? Are you a fan? Are you not a fan? And yeah, I think that's about it uh for this episode so uh yeah as always thank you for watching make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode make sure to check out our other episodes check out our socials and our streams links down below and check out our discord uh, you talk to us anytime all the time we're on itunes spotify and other podcast platforms if you prefer to listen to us and we have a patreon if you'd like to support the channel more than liking commenting sharing and subscribing if you're brand new just subscribe if you're here and you're brand new just hit that button we're all nice people here sometimes don't catch me on Twitter. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I've been <laughs> I've been Seth. Uh, thank you, Chevy and Sarah, for joining me again. I'm sure I'll see you guys real soon. And uh, I'll see you guys real soon. Until then, have a good one and take it easy.